This is Jay Michaels. Welcome back to In the Passion Pit. And we're in the season of elections now. And elections has a different meaning these days. So, so when we speak to activists, when we speak to warriors these days, uh, uh, it, it transcends in so many meanings. Uh, I'm honored to have with us uh, Deborah Roth, Mercedes Vasquez from Fourth U Artivists, and Sunflower Duran from Pink Arts Peace Productions. Uh, these people have declared war on, on the status quo and, and are, are bringing about a new norm for us. And I'm really thrilled to be able to speak to them. Ladies, welcome, welcome, welcome to, to the program. How are you? We're great. <laughs> Getting better, yeah. better and um, better. <laughs> I, when I saw your material, when I saw the artwork, when I read the copy of this, um, I thought to myself, artivists, what a great word. Um, and and I, was, I was extra thrilled because, uh, how can I put this? You're not being genteel. There you go. The, the works that you're doing is powerful. The works that you're doing is diverse. Uh, you are leaving no one behind, uh, and you have a very strong message. Please share with, with our, our viewers uh, about your project, about your upcoming event. Well, Jay, I think all of what you've said about our upcoming event is really built on the foundation that we have created over the last, wow, now 11 years. Oh, We've God. been doing this since, 20, uh, since 2009. Um, we started out and, and talk about shaking up the status quo. We started out in 2009 producing uh, Eve Ensler's iconic show, The Vagina Monologues, and did that for probably four or five years. And then we brought in other, some of her other shows. And, and our mission has always been about doing everything we can to support organizations who work to end gender violence, who work initially with the way that, you know, so much has changed in the last 11 years for, for the good. I mean, we were doing this well before Me Too, um, but there's so much awareness that has grown even since then. So back then we talked about, and we still, I mean, we still do use this language that we work to end violence against women and girls locally and around the world. Now, because of our, our our global education around gender, we say that we, we work to end gender violence and that really is across the board. So we've been shaking things up for a while. And we back then when we were connected with Eve Ensler, um, we were called Fourth U V Day. And V Day is, if, is Eve Ensler's global uh, incredible um, community mission that has raised millions of dollars just through productions of the vagina monologues all over the world to benefit organizations who work to end gender violence. And somewhere around 2015, I think 2016 was actually our first year where we kind of morphed from Fourth UV Day to Fourth U Artivists, Activism Through the Arts. And that we, the first time I heard that was through, was through Eve Ensler. I mean, I don't know that she coined it or invented it, but it's certainly apropos about what we do. And since then, we've, we've really broadened our scope set so that we now um, really invite, and again, the, the focus is on really highlighting uh, women and, and people who identify as women to bring their works to us. We have a, um, a, cur a curating committee. We have a submission committee that looks at things that are, that are um, brought to us. And we were supposed to do um, a show in the spring and the, literally the weekend after New York shut down. Oh no. Yes, so oh. that was heartbreaking for many reasons. And given everything that happened, it's certainly pandemic related, but um, everything that's exploded finally around our, our awareness finally of the systemic racism that exists all around the world. Um, our creative director, Erin Bigelow, who couldn't be with us today, I'm what we, we decided to nub, dub her our creative director and I'm the managing director because I started this thing back in, in 2009. Um, she really was the catalyst for bringing together what we are now presenting this weekend, which um, our fabulous director, Mercedes, um, can tell you a little bit more about that maybe. Yeah. That's terrific. Yes, please. Well, thank you, Deb. And I have to say, I'm glad that 
Eve or whoever coined the term um, artivist, because that's how I feel. That's why I can relate so much to Fort Hugh artivists and to this project, because we are artists and we are activists and we're trying to get the word out. So yes, our brilliant and creative director, Erin, reached out to me and was telling me about this um, project that she wanted to, the, the, the organization wanted to put together about women's voices. And they got all these amazing poems and stories from women back in the 1980s. So this was 40 years ago and they were singing our call, our battle call that we're doing still today, which is, you know, inequality, uh, domestic violence, gender violence too. They were, you know, radical lesbians, um, women of color. We have Audrey, we have work from Audrey Lord and um, Rosie Rosario, all these amazing women who came before us to want to create a change. And so Aaron and the curation committee, we all got together and we started to select all these amazing pieces. And we're excited to, to bring this about. I mean, this is our stories. These are stories from the women in our past, the women who came before us, and we all have the same message. And most importantly, I think that um, the reason we have the same message is because there's a shift that still needs to happen. And it, we're not quite there yet. We've made a huge stride. And I think that we continue to make stride with the work that we're producing and our passion, but there's still a, way, a long way to go. Indeed, indeed. Um, when, when you mentioned uh, Eve Ensler, it, it, it reminded me, I, I, uh, I worked with her in 2003 on V-Day and she did, uh, she did uh, the production, she did Vagina Monologues. We did it on Broadway, but we did it with members of a particular organization. And I, I still remember, it's funny, as you're talking about mobilizing the troops, if you will, when, when, they, when they walked in to do it, uh, they're very happy and they thought, oh, look at this, we're doing a play. <laughs> when they finished, there was an air about them that said, look at the message that we have just brought. When the audience stood up for them, there was something in them. And it wasn't the theatrical, oh, look, I got a standing ovation. It was, I have I said something. Uh, and and when I first saw, when, when Sunflower first brought it to my attention, I thought, oh, a response to me too, excellent. And then when I read and realized, you've been doing this for a decade before that, I said, now, oh, there's forward thinking. Now, now here's something interesting. Um, uh, what obstacles do you face? And I'm not asking you in terms of theatrical obstacles. Oh my God, we all know theatrical obstacles these days. But what obstacles of enlightenment do you still face? We're in the post Me Too. We are in a world where, where the concept of sexuality is not just male and female, the, the, it's, it's vast. And I'm asking all three of you on this, uh, what's, the, what's the obstacles in terms of enlightenment? What, what barriers are you still needing to break right now? Well, I think the shift that we have with this production is that it's all encompassing all, all the genders and we are making a conscious effort to ask and um, allow people to use their pronouns that they're comfortable with and, you know, to have voices from everywhere. Well, and Sunflower, how long have you been with us, Sunflower? She's, she's been Since amazing. 2011, I got the pleasure of meeting Eve Ensler at our show. And that was the first year that I performed all the Vagina Monologues. And, you know, I, I've taken breaks, but pretty much been on board almost every year since then. Yep. You're just an artivist at heart. <laughs> and we, it, we re we're very conscious. Um, there's certainly, you know, thank, thank goddess. There's cer certainly lots of amazing organizations out there that work to empower girls, to... Um, to do all kinds of work that, that's around lifting up women and, and lifting up women, people who identify as being women. We, we've continued to keep our mission very focused and, and Mercedes addressed it um, and, and we continue to in, in our mission statement that's very much around supporting women who are, who've been victims of domestic violence, of rape, of at any kind of violence in particular. And within that message, you know, of course there's one of empowerment. 
And one of the things that's just blown me away over the years, and we even managed to do it virtually this time, I think, right? <laughs> we, we have what we call sharing circles. And one of the, the statistics that, that is out there in the world that you know Eve has in all of her information, we have in all of our information now, is that one in three women at some point in their lives will be raped, beaten, or violated. And Vagina Monologues is this extraordinary blend of funny, if you can imagine there's, there's funniness within, within that, but- Oh, it's there, uproarious. It is, it's, it, it's uproarious and it's poignant and it's devastating. You laugh, you cry, you literally do everything. And I think it's, it, it's what I, you know, your question, Jay, about what do we, what, what barriers do we need to get through? It's still continuing to bring this conversation to light. Um, and I think this show, because this show in some ways, and, and Sun Farrell, you've been with us for a while and Mercedes, you, you know, you, you've been in a bunch of our productions too. In some, in some ways, this almost feels closest to that combination of, um, of emotions that you get from vagina monologues, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And I just have to address that along with, you know, all the important issues and awareness of all the violence, there's also this underlying um, feeling of racism that still exists. And that we're also addressing in this show. So we're yes. adding that element to it as well. And like Deborah said, you know, there is this emotional, yes, I, I totally, in a different like level, completely, but also brings up so much um, emotions and awareness and just makes you think about where you are right now in life and what opportunities you have and what opportunities many don't have. Right. Uh, and I do feel like we've always provided the space. Um, it, it's what I started to say. And then mm -hmm. since my brain is a sieve, it kind of floated <laughs> off somewhere. We, we do the, we've done these sharing circles since the beginning. And with that statistic of one in three women, the first time that, that I did this, um, and I, I totally, you know, totally mimicked uh, Eve's, you know, spiel that she does at the end of, that she did, you know, years ago when she was up there doing it, um, the show, I do this whole thing, you know, explaining to people why we're here, talking about this, you know, this, um, uh, this percentage, this one in three women, and then, and then very gently invite women who have ever been subjected to violence to stand if they are comfortable. And that first year that, that, that we did that, we hadn't really had conversations among the cast about it. And, and it was a pretty diverse cast at, at that point. I mean, that's, now that's even more of a focus as Mercedes pointed out. But even back then, there were women that for the first time were, were standing up and speaking out. And that's, the, you know, I just love this name that we came up with, Radical Voices. I think so much of this work that just will, will have to continue to be is for women to find their voices, to speak out. Where was it? There was someone, do you remember reading this week? And I'm blanking out on the, on the, um, the country now where women, was it Iran? Do you remember reading this week that, that women are now saying, and, and it's, it's a taboo conversation because they've always been made to be the, you know, the victim is made to be wrong in some of these, um, you know, these countries that are so horribly, you know, misogynist and, and they're starting to speak up. They are finding their voices. Mm. And oh. that's one of the things we've watched within our cast. And then I do that same thing in front of the audience. Now we won't do it with this one, obviously. We don't do it with all the shows, but Vagina Monologues and several of the ones since then, we then turn to the audience and invite them to stand with us. If you've ever known, if you've ever been raped, beaten, or violated, if you've ever known a woman, if, and women stand for the first time and their families, and, and it's a conscious effort, their yeah. families understand that, that, and they maybe have never known a mother who's ne whose daughter never knew, or it's, it's, it, it's amazing. And, and the fact that this happens even more, you know, that percentage is even higher in our marginalized communities is even more devastating. So that's where we're at. It's not, it's not a light topic, but it's, it's an absolutely perilously important one. <laughs> Yeah. Good. I'm glad it's not a light topic. You want light topic? Go see vaudeville somewhere. But, but uh, I, I, it, it's, it's very funny. I was drawing the breath to to ask a question which you've essentially answered halfway through already. Um, uh, 
I was going to ask how the audience reacts to this, and you have you have brilliantly told me. I was also going to ask Mercedes when you direct it, when you when you formulate this uh, this piece. Uh, was, was there a particular criteria, like you were looking for a particular through line? And and once you had them and you had your cast, were there any, for lack of a better term, breakthroughs? Did any cast member all of a sudden just sigh and went, yeah, that happened to me? Or or or, or they had their aha moments, as people like to say? Yeah, uh, there's been a lot of aha moments and hopefully Sunflower can share one of hers as, as one of the cast members. Um, there wasn't exactly a through line that we were looking for. I mean, all of these stories and poems had the same kind of feel like women just voicing, you know, having something to say, expressing themselves. What we did create was a storyteller to kind of put the stories, all the pieces together. Mm -hmm. And um, that I think she's really vital to the show. And it kind of like gives the audience she kind of like instructs the audience where to go with where the pieces are going. So I think that, I hope that comes across very well. And I just wanted to add um, really quick with Deborah was saying, I, I think that what she did for those shows, I mean, it was so important to see the audience connect. And I think that's the same for these, for this piece. Um, it's a way for even the cast members, we're all connecting because as you mentioned, there have been a lot of aha moments and I've had one-on-one -on -one rehearsals with the cast where some of the cast members even wrote their own pieces. You know, they, they, there's at least four original pieces in this. And I know for a fact two of them um, are sharing something they've never shared before. So it's a very vulnerable, it's very like touching, it's very emotional, it's very passionate. And I think, um, I know working with uh, Sunflower, their, her piece, the bridge poem, you know, she told me, and she could probably um, share this herself, that it, it, it brought her back to an experience she had with a coworker. You know, every um, actor, actress has mentioned where they have, ever, have had a connection to the piece, where it brought them back to this memory so that they can use that for the piece. Or um, it's just something, for some reason, I don't think there has been a piece that one of the actresses has not been able to relate to. Sunflower, I had no idea you were in it. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I, 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 knew you, I knew you wanted to, you, you, you're one of the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the leaders, if you will. Uh, regarding the production, one of the producers uh, regarding this. Uh, I had no idea you were in it also. Um, uh, I, am you're, on, you're I am on the council. You're what, I'm sorry? I'm on the council, on the Fort Hugh Council. Um, uh, now you're a tough cookie. Uh, uh, pa pa pardon pardon the, 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 the cleverness of the remark. Uh, what did it take for you to open up like this in front of everyone for, for your kind of piece? I'd, I'd love to hear how someone like you, who is very strong, uh, uh, opened up and, and shared and shared pieces with, uh, in this case, with the world. Actually, Mercedes and I were on a rehearsal just last night, and um, we did the piece about three times, and she liked the last performance. She was like, you did well. I, I felt like you felt connected. And then she goes, do you want to do it one more time? Or are you fine? And I said, you know what? Let's do it one more time. And we did it, and then I really felt it. I really felt connected. Like my, my my whole body felt in it. I every emotion with every word I felt it was like truly wonderful. And I always say that every year that I'm part of this production, I become a better person. I feel like I grow, and um, it makes me a better person each and every time that I'm involved with Fourth U Artivist and we do a show. It changes me, and as I'm sure the audience is changed by being the spectator in one of these pieces because they're so powerful. My piece is called A Bridge Poem and is about a woman who is tired. One line says she's the sole friend, the sole black friend to 34 individual white people. And you know, I, I, that's happened to me throughout my life. You know, I always, I'm the, the only ethnic one, in between in my with my friends or at work sometimes you know not now there's a lot of diversity at my job right now but in the past you know it's always been the case especially because I'm from the Bronx and I went to NYU and I ended up you know being around a lot of you know 
a lot of white people. That's just how it was. You know, there's no way to sugarcoat it. It was just what it was. So I really relate to this piece. Yeah. It's it's so funny you say that. I'm I'm old enough to remember when when I could be in a crowd and someone would say, well, well, go ask him. He's the Jewish guy. He understands these things. And I'm like, no, I don't speak for the entire Hebrew race. Thank you. Right. Uh, so I can understand that frustration. Uh, you said something very interesting. You said uh, it changes you every year. And I'm going to ask all of you this, uh, and I'm sure the answer is going to be as diverse as your organization. Sunflower, why does it change you every year? You are connected to this. You are understanding. You're an enlightened human being. What about it each year? What, what is it? What do you find in you each year that grows from this? Well, accepting others, compassion, empathy, you know, I feel like it opens me up to just, you know, do God's work and, and, uh, and have compassion for our fellows. Hmm. Uh, uh, Mercedes, when, uh, uh, as a director, I'm sure there are moments where you had to sit very quietly. Oh, yes, that's good. That's fine. But in your head, you're going, oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, how has it changed you doing this? How has it changed you? Um, you know what? It's funny because I'm an actress first. You know, that's my trade. And I'm also a healer. And as a director, it was almost like doing healing work, believe it or not. It's, it's like you're leading, you're guiding. You see something in the actress, you see something in the piece, and it's just kind of bridging it together, right? And just allowing them to then see their best selves. And doing this work, I, first of all, I said yes to this work because I was doing some anti-racism um, work during post-George Floyd. And it was just so important for me to always be active some way, somehow. Like I mentioned, I'm an actress, I'm an artist, I'm a healer. So being involved, sharing in whatever way I can share, helping one person to take action, to do something different, to help heal themselves or heal the world, that's how I try to live my life. Every day I wake up and I'm like, how am I gonna make this the best life? How am I gonna help someone? How are we going to change the world? And I honestly believe that this piece, if we can get the world to see it, will have an impact. You will definitely get the world to see it. You yes. will definitely <laughs> get the world to see it. Hey, Michael, we'll make sure of that. There you go, see? <laughs> yeah. um, healer, tell us about being a healer. That's an interesting word. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, as a healer, I identify as a healer because I help others heal themselves. And I do a lot of Reiki, crystal Reiki, um, chakra realignments. And also as an artist, I feel like as artists, we're all healers, right? People come to watch us perform. They come to forget about their troubles, whatever pains, whatever depression they have just to escape. And we give them something, you know? They go back feeling a little bit more uplifted or a little bit inspired. And I, that's, that's what I identify as a healer. It's, I, I ask it because I, I teach theater history and the one thing which I always say is theater began as a religion. Mm -hmm. In the ancient Greeks, uh, you went to you went to the 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 auditorium not only to to hear the play, but the play was a parable about their gods and and what was going on. So so it's funny you're carrying that tradition, oh, wow. being being a theatrical healer, if you will. <laughs> yeah. um, Deborah, I'm sitting back for your answer. You have you're one of the founders on this. You have you have seen it at its best and at its worst. You've seen it for all eleven. Uh, and that's a lucky number, uh, 11 years. And now the, the challenge is here. How has it changed you? Did she freeze? Oh, uh, and here I just thought she was thinking. She looked like that. She looked like she was. Well, okay. There you I'm, go. I'm, there you go. She is. Oh, uh, yeah. We don't know what's going on with this. I got to um, tell you, it's perfect because you're in this. Thing. I was like, oh, she's thinking about <laughs> thinking for a really long time. <laughs> um, yeah, it, I, where do I start? I'll keep it succinct. It's um, it's been extraordinary for me. I I, I like to say that. Um, so so I I am a, a life and relationship coach. I work mostly with with women. Um, I'm an interfaith minister. Um, I, I lead women's circles on the new moon every month. I do several meditations a month, different kind of healing than, than um, 
than what it's maybe, maybe well, I think also what Mercedes does is emotional and psychological, but um, I've been, I've been, so for a living, you know, whether I'm creating a wedding, whether I'm creating um, uh, a life passage ritual for someone, ritual is a big part of my life. Part of what I do is create sacred space. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, not part of, that is what I do. Every, every part of my life, I'm creating sacred space in one way or another. And I feel like we do this together. The container that we, that we build together is, I believe, and I am not an, an actor, obviously by trade, um, the way that, that Mercedes is. And I do believe what we do is very different than other theatrical productions. And in fact, I can tell you back in the days when we did vagina monologues, I mean, vagina monologues was, you know, there were, it, it was all over the world. And so, and in many co colleges and women would come to participate in our show, you know, as, as actors and say that they'd never had, they'd never had that sense of community that we built together um, in any of the other shows. We're, but that's very much a part of what we do. So I feel like not only just sitting in my own women's circles that I've done for 20 years, um, but the stories that I've heard. And, and I, always, I always joke, I joke on my website that um, the work that I do is very gynocentric, it's very women-centric, perhaps because I'm the only daughter of, of four kids. I have three brothers, three terrific brothers. Um, we all had, three of us all had boys until finally one brother and his wife produced girls. Now, thank God, I've got two granddaughters. <laughs> so I feel like, like this is anybody, this touches anybody who's involved in any way, whether you're working on the lights and, and our, one, our one fabulous, uh, we used to call him our, our V-man, now he's our A-man, our artivist man, um, Matt, who's been our light technician since the beginning. He's also a member um, of the Fourth Universal Society, which is where this name comes from. We should probably talk about that. Um, the Fourth Universal Society is a UU congregation in New York City basically a liberal religion. Anybody can check it out. Check out Unitarian Universalism. Um, and they have hosted us in their beautiful sanctuary, which we're obviously not going to be in for this show. Um, but it's a beautiful space for, for theater. And it is a sacred space. And in, in the work that we do, I feel like whether you're working the lights, whether you're a cast member, I'm not in the cast this year. Often I just, I'd like to, you know, have some kind of small role, but I just didn't want to do that this time for a number of reasons. Um, everyone's touched by it. And, and it's, I'd be so curious. We're having a, a Q and A, a question and answer, which, which we often do at, at the end of, the, of a show anyway, um, to hear what people come up with. Cause it's a little, you know, those of you that have, that have either watched online performances throughout this pandemic or have participated in things that would normally have a live audience um, it, it'll be interesting to, you know, to play, we're playing to each other. That's what we've done in our rehearsals. Um, but I, I do believe, and I think the shifts and changes that I've seen and, and that I know have happened with me have come as a result of the core community that we have, our, our what we call our, now our advisory council, which we formed um, when we made the shift from 4th UV Day to 4th U Artivist in, in 2016 that, that Sunflower's um, a part of that I think whether it's that, that core that we all remain committed, we're, you know, we're like the, the glue that goes from one, you know, one production to the next, to we always have different cast members. We have returning ones. Um, you know, our, we have our, our in, in the vagina monologue days, we call them, and so I loved when you used that phrase, Jay, at the very beginning, we call them our vagina warriors. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're artivist warriors. Mm -hmm. um, on this very important mission. And I, I think every story that I've heard and every, the, the energy that we create, and, and it's been really cool to watch how we've even been able to do it virtually, has deepened me and grown me and expanded me. So I'm gonna get choked up mm -hmm. over the last 11 years. That's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. Um, I'm, I, I asked this question lately because I've, I've been speaking to a lot of uh, individuals whose projects have, and I'll, I'll say political, and yours is not political necessarily, but at least it's, it's to enlighten, if you will. Uh, my guru, Bill Maher, 
uh, asks this of his guests over and over, and I'm asking it of, of mine these days. Why are people so stupid? Um, y y what you have done and all that I'm hearing from all three of you, you're telling me this person is touched and you have been touched and you have changed and this has changed and that has been changed. But there are people out there that still buck this. There are people that out there that still, I am sure you still have obstacles of getting things done in something that should simply be done. Um, so I ask it only slightly rhetorically, why aren't, why isn't everyone listening? Why, why do we still have to scream as opposed to just speak? I could get political. But <laughs> Please. Why Please. did half of the country, you know, how, how did America vote in the guy that's been there for the last four years? I'm sorry, I've just got to say it. Thank There's... you. That, that's the reason I ask it. I'm watching the election returns. And again, I'm scratching my head and I'm going, I'm sorry, is it me? Uh, am I an old man? Do I not, uh, am I wrong? Uh, there is such an obviousness about this. Why? Why are people not allowing this to enter their brains? Well, we're still a patriarchy. We'd like to think that groups okay. like ours are making a difference, but we are. Okay. And, and we're not, we're certainly not the worst patriarchy in the world, but, uh, you know, men are still in charge and the tide is shifting. Me too, and, and, and the awareness that's arisen, um, you know, about systemic racism since George F Floyd's murder, I, I've got to believe, and you know, and I've been around a while, that this time, it's different. I've got to believe that, that, that some of these people, Jay, that have been sleeping, that we're not gonna wake up everybody. That's it, it, just not, not the way that energy works, but I think we're waking up more and more. Yeah, and like Deborah said, I, I would like to believe it as well. And I, I tend to think sometimes we need contrast, right? <laughs> they, they can't, you have to have the light and the dark. And sometimes, you know, we wouldn't know what the light is without the dark. So now we're doing our work and hopefully we can eliminate all the darkness, but that's a great question. Well, yeah. we'll do it fast because our current president just announced that, you know, he won and everything I after know. this is, but let's no, not go I, there. Oh my God, I, I don't want to curse on my own program. Anyway, um, uh, uh, in terms of enlightening people, uh, uh, and, and I agree with you, I think I think we have reached a point and, and we're talking in this little box now. So I think uh, uh, this year's presentation is probably gonna be that much more palpable to your audience because it's right in their face. You know, when you're in an audience, you get to you get that, that moat of a distance. And so you're looking at, at the whole picture and maybe something disappears. They're looking right into the face of someone as they're saying such amazing work. So the, the concept, uh, the concepts of what you're doing is right there in their faces. Um, uh, uh, after George Floyd and after uh, what has come to light because of the video world, all of the absolute injustices in the world, what did it do for your organization? It's, it's easy to say, I'm sure it empowered it and energized it. Was there something that you said, okay, we are different now because of the current world? Was, it, was there something that was different because of, of all the, the insanity that goes on these days? Well, I, I can say for a fact that, I, and I, I don't think this is just a shift for this show, and I, and, I, and I mentioned earlier that I think Aaron um, Bigelow, our, our creative director, was really the one that, that you know, called truth to power in saying, we can't just be, I mean, like it's not enough, it is a pretty big deal to say that we are an organization that works to end violence against women and girls or that works to end gender violence. We've got to now be really focusing and, and, some, and we've, we've already, the advisory council has already talked about um, we couldn't do it before now because we've been focusing on figuring out how to get this virtual thing out there, but how we can um, deepen and expand how we explain our mission and what we do to, to be more focused about the fact that we are, we are about intersectional feminism. We are about particular reach, particularly reaching into and around marginalized communities. And so I think that, I don't think it's, I, I don't think it's just this show. I mean, I, I think it's something that, that will be changing how Fourth U Artivists um, deepens and expands their work going forward too. 
And I just want to add that that's one of the reasons why I continue to work with them. You know, I, I this is my third project with them, and I always felt that they, or the artist is not only aware but they take action, and they're definitely going along with the times and the changes. Thank you. That that was I was I was I was going to ask uh, I was going to try to to get that statement, and you, you, again, you saved me another ten minutes. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the fact that you take action, the fact that, uh, that, that you are providing, and you're providing it in a very unique way. You're not protesting, you're not signing petitions, you're doing it via the art. Uh, Shakespeare said that uh, actors are the uh, abstract and brief chronicle of the time. Hmm. And that what we see on stage uh, is, is what we remember first. Uh, Richard III was simply a paranoid king with scoliosis, but mm -hmm. thanks to Shakespeare, he is an absolute monster. Um, uh, so tell us about, now let's get into the brass tacks. Now, uh, let, let, let's, let's do the TV listings. Uh, what, what will we see? Uh, uh, I know there's poetry, I know there's, there's drama, there's music, there's even interpretive dance. What's, what's on the bill of fare? What, uh, uh, what are we seeing that night? Well, you're seeing a culmination of all these performances. You have works from, and I, I misquoted earlier, I said Rosie Rosario is actually Rosario Morales, Audre Lorde, Joe Carrillo, all these amazing, amazing um, activists, artists from the 1980s. Um, like you said, you, we have personal work of arts. You know, you have a few poems from some of the cast members. You have this amazing performance, a few videos, a few heartwarming songs and very radical in your face performances. We have a tribute to RBG and we have a tribute to Brianna Taylor. Um, yeah, anything else uh, I missed, Deborah? Oh, and, and we have, thanks to you, my dear. And actually I, there's something I need to send you around this too that I just saw yesterday. We have a really um, powerful video that Mercedes, I think you found it, um, that brings in the indigenous uh, peoples Yes. that we, we thought we had um, an, you know, an indigenous act, you know, actress, but, um, but we didn't, and we knew that we want, that that was yet another marginalized community. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted to bring in all, all women from all walks of life, you know, exactly. to try to represent women from all, we even have a transgender piece. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit of everything. And I think it's super powerful. I would say people come with your box of tissues because there'll definitely be some moments, you know, some tear jerkers. And your credit cards. And your credit cards, <laughs> yes, because we're doing this for charity. All proceeds go to Saki and the legal momentum, which, you know, we, we can all use the help and we can all donate, you know, from the heart. Definitely. And one of the things that we'll be doing, and that really we do at the beginning of every show, we always have um, two beneficiaries, two local organizations that we um, send our net proceeds to. And for the last, well, keeps getting bumped, you know, because of, of the pandemic. So they'll go probably for another show or two. Um, one of them, and it's really interesting timing. One of them is Saki for South Asian women. And if any of you um, and any of your listeners, Jay, um, if, if they've not discovered this, very interesting synchronicity. There's a wonderful daily newsletter out there now called uh, Anti-Racism Daily. And, the, and it's not just, it's not black and brown, it's, it's really any mar marginalized uh, you know, population. And the one today was about what South Asian, uh, what the South Asian population, what the diaspora looked like, um, especially after the Vietnam War. And Saki, to hear their numbers, and, and they're both of their representatives, we always try to have a representative from each one of the beneficiaries who gets up and just for a couple of minutes before the show talks about the work that they do in the world. So Saki talks about the, you know, I was saying earlier how in marginalized communities, the, the uh, percentage, the, the rate of domestic abuse is even higher and, and, and apparently very much so. And it's not one that we would normally know about. Um, it, it is in the, in the South Asian community as well. Legal Momentum has been around for 50 years and they offer pro bono uh, legal support for um, women who have been battered, who've been abused in some way, and also just have, have done major um, uh, lobbying for, for uh, legislation and that kind of thing. 
So, so they are our two beneficiaries this time. And they, I think we know we have, we know we have a video from, um, from Legal Momentum and we're working on getting one from, from Saki for them to talk in their own words about what it is that they do. So I, I think recognizing, um, you know, there, this will certainly we won't make, we've made to date over the last 11 years, which is pretty sweet for a, you know, a, a little charitable theater performance group. Um, we've made $165,000. We've raised that much for our various beneficiaries. Um, and if you go to our website, you'll see all the different organizations we've supported over the years. I'll be very curious to hear what we do with, you know, with this virtual version that we're, you know, it's new for everybody to, to do performances like this online. But we also have, you know, when they're live, we have this very vibrant um, space. The sacred space at the Fourth Universalist Society is a gorgeous space. And in the back, we have a table where we sell all kinds of merchandise from, um, chocolate vagina pops in the years that we did vagina warriors <laughs> to, um, well, you name it, you know, keychains, anything that supports and, and enhances women, um, jewelry, we, we sell wine and we sell, you know, themed goodies for people to munch on. So we do a lot of raising of money outside of just ticket sales. We've managed to do that, um, just a little bit, but I encourage anybody that, that you know, wants to get a ticket um, and tickets are, you know, they're by donation anywhere from $5 to $500 um, to keep, to look past the place where you, where, you know, where you get your ticket on Eventbrite. And there's a list, we're, ca we're calling it our add-on online store and people can get a session with Mercedes. You can get a session with me there will be about 30 RBG masks available, face masks, um, and a couple, and some wonderful jewelry. One of, uh, another one of our actors, and also she, uh, she's on our advisory council. She couldn't be with us today, Lou. Um, she's making beautiful necklaces. So we look for any way possible to pull as much money in as we can. And, and if people can't come to the show, and there's no excuse now, because you don't have to travel anywhere. I've got family calling in from, you know, California and <laughs> up in New England who haven't been able to come before. No excuse now. Just hit your computer. <laughs> I, I was going to say that, that uh, uh, the, the new sacred space is, is Zoom because you can come from any corner of the world and you can be on the move. You just simply, it can even be on your phone. Your entire right. show can be watched on your phone. So the, the great message is accessible to anyone who simply wants it. Um, Definitely. Uh, uh, really quick, uh, you have pieces from the 80s. Uh, I'm, I, I, I love the, 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 the Nostradamus uh, complex that, that uh, uh, I call it that. Uh, when you watch these pieces from the 80s, when you read them, when you see them now as they're in rehearsal, uh, uh, how, have, how have they aged? Do you hear things that you go, oh my God, no, that no, I'm glad that's over. Or do you sit there and cringe sometimes and say, why is that still not going away? Do you, do you hear little prophecies and, and other such things in these pieces? I have to say, sometimes I even cry because a lot of that has not gone away. Um, very, now that you mention it, there's very little that, I'm, that it seems outdated. Most of it seems really relevant to today. Wow. Which is kind of a sad statement in itself. Thank you. you. Kind of wish that it wasn't so relevant. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I I read an article recently on Boys in the Band because they had mm. they put it on Netflix and it was right. on Broadway. And and the commentator in the article made a point of saying, "Well, this no longer exists, and that no longer exists, and this no longer exists, and that's wonderful." Uh, uh, <laughs> if if I could wish a, a very left-handed compliment to you, may in all the years to come, uh, there are times that you go, "Why don't we?" No, we don't need to because that no longer exists. Right, yep. Um, well, and there's, there's a very, now it is outdated. I don't know if you can still get it, but that's, you know, we keep bringing her up because she's, she's like the, the mother, the grandmother of our, of our existence, Eve Ensler. Um, she, she produced a really wonderful um, uh, documentary way back when she started doing this 25 years ago. Um, and it's called, and this is what she has said her, mission is, her vision is, and it, the name of it is Until the Violence Stops. 
Wow. So just what you, I mean, you nailed it, Jay. It's like, will we get to, yes, I've got to believe that we will get to a point where there's enough enlightenment, enough people that, that stand up and say, enough already. You know, this, this isn't just decades. This is century. This is millennia that we've been dealing with this, you know, this issue. Yeah. I'm glad you say about millennia. My, uh, my, my wife, uh, in listening to, to all of you, I'm, I'm hearing my wife right now because she's a healer. She is a spiritualist. Uh, she's an ordained minister also. And, and uh, uh, Deborah, it's very funny when you said, thank goddess. Uh, <laughs> I have heard her say that exact thing over and over again. And, and she's also an astrologer and she talks to me about the dawning and pardon, pardon the song pun, the dawning of the age of Aquarius and how the entire notion of the patriarchy, the reason we have such a death grip now is because it is going away. Right. It's, it's time right. is is over right. and we're starting to see a change. And I don't recall ever of a woman declaring war. I don't recall ever of a woman sending someone to be executed. Right. So uh, I hope I live long enough to see this change because I think we're going to have a very peaceful world. Mm -hmm. when well, and I think um, part of what we do and one of my favorite phrases, and, and in fact, I, I been doing now for a couple months, um, five o'clock on Wednesday. So here we are. I've been doing um, Facebook and Instagram lives um, on dancing with your divinely feminine wisdom. And each week I bring in a different goddess and talk about what that means. And it's not just for women. I mean, what we need to do and what, what challenging the patriarchy doesn't mean we want to kill off the men. <laughs> no Thank way. You. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> promise but it's really it's about and there's so much amazing literature about there about what it means to to create a, a common um to, to embrace the divine masculine mm -hmm. versus the toxic masculine which is too much still in in existence right now but balancing what divinely feminine wisdom is and divinely masculine feminine. It's not about, it's really about creating the balance. It's creating, not even the balance, it's creating an integration. Yeah. And, I, and I think sometimes you have to be a little in your face, which, which our shows are and yay for us. You know, we, we need to be shook awake, unfortunately. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's funny you say that because uh, uh, thousands of years ago, yes, that's what it was. Uh, uh, yes. There was far more equality. Somehow, somewhere, things got all shook up the wrong way, and and now we're trying to get out of it. And yeah, and yep. I can't wait for that. And I, like I said, I, I can't wait to to hear uh, that your biggest problem is well, that doesn't exist anymore. That doesn't exist anymore. So what do we do now? Yeah. So let's uh, <laughs> let's do a musical. Whatever. From your God, for your eyes to ears, for the to the or motors, and for your mouth to the goddess's ears. Yes. There you go. Yes. Tell us exactly date, time, website, everything, because because this needs to be seen. Uh, give us that. Give us the particulars, the coordinates. Go for it, Mercedes. So November 7th at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's this and Saturday. That's uh -huh. this Saturday. And it's on Eventbrite. All you have to type in is Radical Voices, the Otherness of Feminism. And I can also, I, I will send you the link. I'm not sure if you have it, but I will also send you the link as well. So you can. Oh, of course it. I have it. I wrote an article on oh, it. So perfect. I got, yes, I got all great. that. And I would, I would, you could send it to me again. I will forward it. Oh. And, and, and this is a, this is a standing uh, uh, offer uh, from, from me. Please, anytime you're doing an event, please send me information. I oh. would love to spread Thank you, the Jay. word. Um, Thank you so much. I just want to add, you could also go to the fourth You Are to This website and buy tickets there. And it sounds it's it, it's spelled like it sounds, and and you you and, and I'm glad you've written about it too, Jay, because it's very clear <laughs> what is this. It's 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 art of this. <laughs> it's you know it's fourth U the letter U for the the number U T H U art of this, and you as soon as you you click on that, you'll get a buy tickets, which will take you to the Eventbrite page as well, and then you'll learn more about what we do too if you go to the website. I I have to share with you that that you're preaching to the converted with me because uh, uh, there is the story that my mother told about when she was three and uh, her entire family uh, was uh, uprooted, if you will, in, in Germany because there was yet another uh, uh, toxic male leader at that time. And uh, my grandfather was taken to a concentration camp and mm. my mother tells the story of how my grandmother grabbed everything she owned that was of any value, grabbed her 
and went to that concentration camp, went to the officer of that, that concentration camp. My mother remembers sitting there for about three hours or more hours. She doesn't even remember she was a little girl, but she just remembers there forever. My grandmother came out uh, with, out any of those jewels or stocks or anything that her family owned, but with three visas. Uh, somehow my grandfather got out of that concentration camp and all three of them got on a boat and ended up in New York. Wow. You're I giving me not, the chills. What a story, Jay. Oh, I wow. would not be here. The reason I say it, I would not be here and I'm getting choked up. Yeah. I would not be talking to you if not for the strength of a woman, if not for the strength of my grandmother. Mm. Uh, Oof. So, so when you tell me that uh, women deserve the rights and women are powerful and et cetera. And how you, you, there, there cannot be this great divide. Yeah. And yeah. You're, you're, well, and it's, it's interesting, Jay, cause I look at you, you're definitely one of our a men, clearly <laughs> one of our artivist men. And had it had, had, had we found you during vagina monologues, you would have been one of our vagina warriors, but actually you still are. We're still <laughs> fighting for women's vaginas, whether we're upfront about it or not. Yeah. And I think it's um, knowing that, and I remember it, it, that also took me back to the first training I did in 2009 with Eve Ensler and, and a bunch of her people. There, was like, there were like one or two guys in this room filled with women and Eve is you know, talking about how you put on a vagina monologues production, all that. And this guy, the big burly guy was from Rhode Island or someplace up in, in New England. And, and he, said, um, he said, you know, when people ask me, how come I'm involved if I'm a guy? And I always look at them and straight in the eye and I say, well, are you for violence against women or against it? <laughs> and it was such, it's like, good, so, it was great. We need, we need all men to think that way. That's the male way of putting it. I got yes, it. Yes, I know. <laughs> nice but very effective. I'm, I'm going to practice that from now on. Hi, I'm Jay Michaels. I'm a vagina warrior. Yes. I'm, I'm totally and when we're live again, Jay, if you would like to come volunteer and be one of, you know, one of our volunteers in the back, they, well, during vagina monologues, they always had tags that said, hi, I'm a, a vagina model, you know, vagina warrior. And I think we should still do that because we're always, we will always be, always be uh -huh. fighting for, you know, the rights of vaginas everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And I would be honored. That's why I say, send me everything. Let's, let's keep the word out as long as the word needs to be kept out. Definitely. Thank you all very much. Uh, Sunflower, thank you for connecting me to this amazing yes. organization and these amazing women. Uh, 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 this is what the theater needs to be. This is what indie theater is. It is, it's not, let's go spend $250 to see something meaningless. Uh, let's go see something that's going to change our minds and hearts. And, and thank you both very much and for the amazing work you're doing. And it's been a real pleasure. And, thank and, you, and, here, pleasure. and here's to standing ovations in, in living rooms all around Yay. the world. <laughs> thank you, thank, so thank, you, thank you for helping make that happen too, Jay. My yeah. absolute pleasure. Be brilliant. Thank you. Ciao. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye, all. Bye.